it, it's time my my materials are getting lost or I kind of forgotten about them. And I thought, you know what, this is a good time to go through some of the materials that I have and just recheck my stock and maybe I'll get some inspiration for that next project. If you have any ideas for projects, go ahead, post them in the uh, comments and I may, I'll take them into consideration. Again, I'm still on that beginner side when it comes to the milling machine. I'm looking for easy projects, things to help sharpen my skills and get me moving forward with the milling machine and and the combo projects that both machines require. So I already started pulling off a lot of aluminum out of my work space or my storage area. And what I want to do, I think I want to keep my solid materials on top or as best I can. And aluminum I've kind of dedicated over to this first spot. Aluminum is very forgiving, at least that's what I've found, easy to work with. I like working with it. It's messy, but uh, it's easier on the tooling, and it's something that uh, I like working with. Brass is awesome. It looks beautiful when you're done, but it's messy. It's super messy. Steel, that's a harder material to work with, and I kind of put it over there. I haven't really got... Um, into a lot of requirements where I needed steel, but I have a lot of scrap steel, especially round stock from my brother. Um, so I can work on projects for that uh, with using that scrap steel. But I wanted to reorganize at least the aluminum today and see what I have. So let's get started. What I have on top, we'll move this guy in. Um, pull this down, pull this guy down. So I have a 1168, just a piece of flat square stock. I did play with this a little bit on the mill and I, I uh, milled the end of it. It looks really good. Got a little bit of a burr, but again, just playing with different materials. And I've got a couple other pieces of flat stock. Um, not sure what I'm gonna do with them yet, but that's what I have up there. Um, you know, they got some ridges on it. Again, this was from uh, online metals it's one of their proto boxes and they just send you some random lengths usually around under a foot 10 to 11 inches of, of material so I've got a couple of pieces of flat stock I'm gonna leave these right here and I'll put this larger flat stock oops up here fits right in there nicely and that's other than these giant pieces of flat stock that I have, that's most of the flat stock I have, with the exception of angle iron, some T material, and some U, U material. So let's keep our solid materials on top. What I want to do is try to get my longer lengths of material up top. This is a really nice piece that came with one of those chunks, one of those uh, proto boxes. Let's see what we've got here with size wise. So this piece of stock should be, it's two inch. So I got a really nice piece of two inch aluminum. Let's go ahead and just mark it on the end so we know what it is. And we're gonna uh, stop banging stuff right now. We're going to set this guy up here. Uh, I think that's why I had it down there. Almost fits up there. Regardless. Almost fits up there. So we got a piece of two inch solid stock. Let's see what this is. This here. 
inch and three quarter. Now that one will fit. Let's go ahead and start with that. That'll fit up there. And then I've got a piece of two inch stock. That'll fit right behind it. So let's get that up there first. Next, what do we have here? Is this, oh, so here's a solid piece. This is one and a half inch cold rolled aluminum round. Um, let's put the dimensions, not that I can't figure it out. That up here, that should fit. It's just like this one. So these two almost fit. Do we have anything else solid? Here's a solid piece. And it's longer yet. So this is another inch and a half piece. I got some really good aluminum to work with. I guess I understand why I have these down on the bottom. Maybe I'll put the hollow stuff up top and the solid stuff down on the bottom. Yeah, here's another inch and a half. So I got lots of inch and a half material. I need to come up with a good project with that aluminum, the inch and a half stuff. Um, here's a smaller piece of solid stock. Um, I can't really Let's see what we got here. Here's uh, that material I use for my, uh, the tube material for my no spill oil container. Um, I'm thinking about making two more of those no spill oil containers with, but make them shorter. You don't need, you don't need a very tall, you don't need a lot of cutting oil when you're using that kind of stuff. Um, so we got a couple, couple more pieces here. This one here. Slightly shorter. I think it would fit on top. This one here might fit on top. All right. So here we're going to shift gears. We're going to pull these guys off. We're going to put our hollow stuff on top, and I'm going to put the the longer stuff on the back. This is some pretty thick walled aluminum hollow stock. I'm not sure what I'd use this for, but I think at some point I'll come up with something handy to have that's a big chunk of aluminum and I it should fit right in here very good I can put some other rods and things inside of that um, here's another piece of solid stock the the rest of the aluminum I have is just tubes and miscellaneous stuff but I think I'm gonna put the tubes and everything the hollow stuff on top and I'll put all of this other stuff down below starting with the thicker stuff on the back here's some two inch put that back there just put that there and I've got all my inch and a half stock I got quite a bit of that really there's there's a smaller piece inch and, inch and three quarter and Another piece, but it's shorter. Put that up there. Again, these are hollow. Let's get uh, a thicker piece back here. And then I've got this two inch piece. Actually, if I put that there, and then put my giant. Put a big piece of three inch back here. That might keep everything where it needs to be. The other thing I could do is put some of the square stock down there. But let's go back to the top here where I have my aluminum tube and the flat stock. Let's put some of Some of this stuff up there. Again, I've got lots of rods and 
different hollow stock. This one's solid. Maybe that shouldn't be up there. This one's kind of solid. Again, a solid, solid and a hollow. This was something I did earlier. You know, I made these two thread together, just messing around. So this is a solid piece. This is hollow. What else we got? We got... Well, these are all my hollow pieces here, really. Let's see if we can lay these in here. Here's one. There's some. And there's a hollow piece there. Here's a hollow piece. What else we got? That's solid. Oh, we also have uh, some pretty thick walled stuff down here. I don't know if you've seen that. Let's get that in here. This one in here. That in there. Let's shift those there. They're just a little too long for this particular tray holder. That this is IKEA. This is like a wine rack for from IKEA. Um, you know, whatever. That's you use what you you use what you can find, right? Um, and then I have uh, this tube here. I got an idea. Though. I'll put that in there. I'm gonna put that in there. I'm going to put that there. So that's the hollow stuff. I do, well, I got this guy here. And then this little ring I made. That'll come in handy for something at some point. Um, everything else is like, I, I should probably put it up here too. This is still hollow. So I have some square stock. Figure out what I'm going to do with that someday. There's some square stock. That there. That one on top. And then I have the flat stock that I showed you earlier. And I started putting all that stuff on the bottom. The longer lengths, I do have some hex. I only have one hex. I'll put that up here on the front front side but I'll have a lot of little rounds round stocks most of it's nearly the same length but you know within a couple inches let's uh, just slide this stuff up here for different projects here's a shorter piece of three-quarter we'll go ahead and put that up here as well and everything else I'm looking at is kind of flat stock stuff. So I think what I'm going to do is just stack it on, on top, you know. That's really what the top is, is hollow stuff, oddball stuff. Let's see if I put that up there. Does that lay down good? Almost. This guy here, how's that lay? That's fine. Here's some, I got some angle plate. That stuff up here. Okay. And then again, I got my square stock. And my, I got a U, some U channel. And that takes care of that. So, what this might seem like a waste of time, but what this does, it gives me opportunity to go back through the materials that I have and maybe get some inspiration for that next project. I did get some ideas. I got a lot of giant flat stock here as well. Here's a pretty big pretty pretty big piece as well. I got this uh, this flat plate. Anyway, I got some really good aluminum, different sizes, different shapes to work with make some projects with and uh, get started with some 
pretty cool ideas. But anyway, I'm trying to come up with some good ideas. This is uh, some probably AC3 or just some carbon steel plate. I got this L bracket. I'm trying to think maybe I can come up with something like that. I got plenty of nylon if I want to make uh, handles or some soft blow style hammers or, or whatever. I got a lot of that stuff to play with. Um, I got a real, I got a two foot piece of this AC. Well, here, let me show you this. I, I think it's AC3. Anyway, um, I turned that down. What, the very end of it, this was just some scrap from one of the metal suppliers local to me. The end of this was super hard. Um, I had a really hard time turning this down. Um, you'll see on a, another clip in this video, but this is really, this is hard. Um, here's a file. Like it doesn't, it doesn't touch it. You know, this side though will bite. It's, it's, it's different, right? So, which is good for me, right? I didn't want this huge bar that was hardened. It's a two foot bar of steel. I don't need a hardened bar of steel for just random projects. So I'm glad that uh, when I cut that piece off, just the end of it was hardened. But regardless, I got this big chunk of steel to work with. Put that back. And then I also have uh, this inch piece of steel to work with. And I, again, I believe those are AC3. I'll have to look that up. Regardless, um, that I'm trying to figure out if I can get materials from a local provider versus um, buying them online. It, it, this stuff's too heavy to ship. The you can buy it online, but it's way it's so expensive to ship that uh, you know you, that's where you you end up paying too much for this stuff. So if I can buy it from a local supplier, and, and they also said, hey, we'll cut you whatever you want. So if I got a project and I want them to plasma cut out a, a hunk of steel, they'll do it for me. So I got a good source for steel. They could probably get me brass and aluminum and all that, but really it's industrial stuff, so they don't they don't have that stuff in stock. Regardless, I'm rambling on. I got a lot of cool materials. I do have some brass back here. I got a little bit of steel. I don't have a lot of steel. Like I said, I got this plate here and a few flats. I, the, the best piece of steel I have is maybe a square tube or here, this, yeah, we'll pull this down. This is probably the best piece of carbon steel that I have to work with if I, if I have a project. This is uh, inch and a half. One inch by inch and a half hot rolled mild steel. So I got some steel to work with. Looking for inspiration. I just thought I'd share with you. I like to go through my materials. Um, I'll probably use up this square stock brass for some game pieces that I made in some previous videos. I got some friends. I'm wanting to make them a Christmas present. So I'm going to make them those put and takes with these. Maybe I'll just throw that in a video at some point. Um, but that's going to be something I use that stock for. Uh, I got plenty of brass though. Well, why not stop at the aluminum? Let's go ahead and check out the steel that I have. I'm going to pull all of it out. You won't, I'm not going to show you me putting it back, but I'll show you what this, what steel I have. Let's get this aluminum kind of out of the way. All right, I'll show you the, the two inches, the one inch piece of steel I have. Let's, uh, I got some square two. This is solid. Uh, this is just some flat plate. This was just a piece that came off the end. I just wanted to turn it down and see what we can do. It's pretty heavy. This end is hard. I already showed you in another clip. This end is okay. So the, the rod is workable. I use that piece of steel. This one is actually really It's hard. Hard to use. Um, I have this rectangular stock here. I've got a piece of this flat stock. This is a tube stock. I've got a rectangular stock here. This is not seamless. But let's turn it down. I'll show you what I This is what I got. Um, a lot of this kind of stuff is the mystery metal. My my brother works at a place where he often comes across um, some round stock, like round bar that's, you know, an inch, inch and a half uh, in diameter. 
and sometimes up to six, eight feet long. So he's kind of gathered that stuff. He thought, you know, that might be useful someday. And then when I got into using the mini lathe, he said, hey, you want this stuff? I'm not going to use it for anything. He gave it to me. And that's where a lot of this material comes from. Not, not a lot of this material, but a lot of the round stock like this. This was something that he had that he gave me, and I, I turned it down and just, just learned with it, right? So this is some mystery metal, but I think it's just mild steel. Um, I got a piece of that. This is also the mystery metal. This was partial a partial piece that I used for that roller, if you lock, looked at a few videos back for my dad, uh, that's what this piece came from. Same type of material. Um, the This is a, a pin that my brother had that, uh, you know, it, it was, they had to replace it wherever he works, and he's like, hey, I'll take that home. Anyway, I got that piece of material to work with. Um... I mean, it's that kind of stuff that, that uh, he gave me. You know, this the handle for that hammer, the drawbar hammer that I made, that came out of this piece. This is the rest of that stock. It's, it, you know, you can reuse materials. You don't have to buy stuff from Granger or uh, Online Metals or wherever to have brand new stuff just to make a project. If you need a specific material, yes, of course you do. But get some recycled materials and... Learn what these machines work with them. Anyway, that's what this is. Um, I've got a piece of hollow tube material here from something that I worked on. I think that's from a ceiling fan, actually. Uh, here's a, I don't even know what that's from, but it's a solid piece of steel. I might be able to use that for something. Don't throw it away. Um, here's some mild steel, three quarter inch. That's always gonna be handy. This one is more known material. Um, now these were, this was just some hollow tube from maybe a, uh, I don't know, a shower rod or, you know, a hand towel rod or something, but you know, it's pretty straight and everything. I thought, you know, someday I might be able to use that. Why throw that thing away? The, you know, I got some hex stock. Now this was probably from online metals. Um, I did, I was given some stuff from a few people. Uh, that could have been from them, but uh, if you did, thank you. I apologize if I forgot. Uh, this was from a printer. It's a precision ground rod. There are some flats in this, so I can't really use the whole thing, but there's a good chunk of, of, of round center stock in here that I could use for a project. I would just cut this part off, um, but you know, try to salvage what you can, especially when you're learning. Here's some short pieces. This was my T1, or sorry, T9 test piece. It's still holding up. This is starting to rust a little bit. This is untreated. This is not rusting at all. It's just there. So I, I don't have any affiliation with T9. I only bought it because Blondie recommended it. I don't think she has any affiliation with him, but it's, uh, it's Bow Shield T9. I spray it on some steel that I don't want to rust, and it doesn't rust. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna endorse them, but I'll say if you want something that you want to spray on some steel and you don't want it to rust, try some T9 Bow Shield. Um, this is just some cold rolled or hot rolled steel. Uh, the T9. Yeah, let me show you. That's just this stuff. It's expensive, what, 20, 30 bucks for a can. Lasts forever. That's, that's it. And again, I sprayed it on the end. It's not rusting. And this side's rusting. I mean, this was not, and this is untreated. I'm just hanging onto this chunk of metal because I can. Uh, and incidentally, I made, this is my drawbar handle. I sprayed the entire thing with T9, and I must have missed the spot, because there's one little spot here of slight rust. Nothing else was rusting at all. So I went ahead and touched it up with uh, the T9 right there on that end. Just thought I'd share that with you. 
back to the steel I already shared all that uh, I got a little bit of hollow tube here stuff I don't know what the what I'll use this for but I got some hollow tube stuff here here's a thicker walled tube um, and then we get into just some just some steel rod uh, again I bought on online metals I bought some carbon steel and that's where a lot of this came from this came from a printer I scraped this was a this had rubber on it and I scraped all that off I can turn that down and that's a nice little chunk of rod uh, I do have another piece of this came out of the printer this is square stock who knows might have a use for that I doubt I'll make a key out of that but I could here is a piece of half inch rod uh, I think I bought this from Lowe's, just Lowe's or Menards where you can just buy some rat, random stock. So it's either hot rolled or cold rolled, mild steel. It's nothing special. But you can buy that stuff from those home stores and get started and, and turn stuff and learn these machines. Again, this was that shower rod, another piece of it. The I got a, another piece of hex stock. I showed you that earlier, a different piece. These are from those printers. Again, I tore apart that printer. I got some flat flats in here, but there's some round stock in here that you can use. Um, you know, again, if you're learning, you don't want to go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff, tear apart something you're going to throw away. Maybe you'll find something you can use. Here's some half inch stainless. Now, this came from Online Metals. I didn't, I didn't buy this. But I have a few pieces of stainless. Some of them were gifted to me. Some of them just showed up with uh, the online metals. Uh, here's a 3 8 rod of stainless. I, I don't know what, what projects I'm going to use with that yet. But I do have those. And then finally, I got another piece of tube, cold rolled steel. And several... These are all solid pieces of steel. Here's two. Now uh, it, it's cold rolled steel. I don't know. It's probably AC3, just like the uh, the real thick pieces I have there. Um, here's another piece. Um, it, it's it's all got to be carbon steel. This now this piece probably. I think my brother gave me this piece. It's pitted and rusted. It probably was an axle off of a toy or something. Um, and then I got one final flat piece of stock to make a project out of. Anyway, beside that, I have some other chunks of, you know, nylon and just other stuff to work with. But I got lots of material to work with. I, I just need to get some inspiration work with some materials, make some projects. I mean, here's a really, really huge chunk of nylon, black nylon, Delrin, whatever you want to call it. Um, anyway, I got plenty of material to make projects with. I just got to get some inspiration and start getting out here and making some stuff. Oh, here's another piece of uh, inch and three quarter, inch and three eighths mild steel. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to continue on going through my materials. Um, I went ahead and went through the aluminum and I went through the steel. Most of it's just carbon steel, probably A36. But I thought, let's go ahead and finish this out. I'm going to go through the brass and I'm going to go through the nylons and plastics that I have. Just share it with you and then again, it might inspire me to make something unique or, or different. Or if you have any suggestions, go ahead and post them down in this, this video. I may take you up on that and try to build uh, one of your suggestions. So let's just get started. Um, let's pull the brass out and just see what we have again. And uh, then we'll reorganize it. I've got some hex stock. I've got this really nice chunk of square stock. I'm gonna, okay, I've got this really nice chunk of square stock. It's got... This is how it came from online metals. They were scrapping it or something. It's a inch and a half square. Nice, nice piece of brass for some future project on that. I do have some more square and flat stock. 
and let's go ahead and pull those out. A piece of, uh, was it half inch or three quarter? 0.625, it's not either. Um, interesting shape. Uh, square stock though. I was practicing one day with my four jaw chuck and I turned around end off of the square stock. I was just playing around. And I've got some flat stock, some flat brass. Here's a thicker piece of flat brass. Here's some smaller pieces. Figure out what to do with them someday. What else we got? And some more flat stuff, wider. There's a really th thin one. Wider piece. You never know. You never know what kind of project you might have where you need something like that. I did get some odd half. Not sure what to do with these. I like your input on these too. I got these half. I think they're half inch, but they're they're all split in half. Um, not sure. I'm sure there's a reason that you would need this for a project, but I'm just curious what I would use those for. But I got three of those. We'll figure out what to do with those someday. I've got some various smaller kind of pieces of smaller hex stock. Well, two pieces of that. I've got actually have a project idea for, for this stuff. Half inch hex bar. We'll come back to that. And some more now here's some here's the round stock I have. It starts out pretty small. Some pretty small diameter. This kind of stuff would be good for handle making pins or making a pin for something decorative. We'll just slide that this way. Here's your round stock. I've got some tubing. Most of it's solid though. Some more round stock brass. There's a slightly larger one. I think I u I may have bought this for pins for a, a handle, and I've used that. Um, a couple tubing, brass tubes. A uh, couple more brass tubes and some solid brass round bar. So, I've got some varying, various materials. Tubing, I mean, it's a good set of brass. Oh, I've got a few more pieces here. All right, I've got, here's a smaller piece of tube, or a solid brass, and then finally, I bought this one to make some hammer heads out of, hammer faces for, um, you know, like this adjustable hammer thing, or replaceable hammer face. And I did use this for, I think I made one. What do we got? Yep, so I made a, a hammer face for that hammer out of that material. Fun little project. And that's pretty much it on my, oh, I got one more. But this one, I'm gonna hang on. This is nickel aluminum bronze round bar. I think this is made, used for bushings and things like that. I think these, I think this is expensive. Um, if you wanna comment below, go ahead. I don't. I haven't. I didn't intentionally buy this. It came with uh, a kind of a scrap box that I that I purchased online. So I'm going to hang on to that for some future project where I need a specific type of metal, specifically nickel, aluminum, bronze alloy. And finally, I've got a couple hunks of brass. Well, 
I've got a couple V, these were, these were like ways off of a large machine. You can see they're, they're scraped in, they've got some oil channels in them, but they're, they're V blocks. I can use them for, as V blocks, cut them down or do something, but I haven't really modified them. I haven't wanted to yet. I think for, for now, it's really good for, if I'm working on some round material, I can use it to put my, put my work pieces so they're not rolling around, things like that, but I just store them up there for now. And then finally I did get a piece of angle brass. May figure out a project for that someday. So this flat stuff would be great to work with the mill, round stuff obviously on the lathe, but there's my brass stock. I'll come up with an idea for this stuff. I do have an idea for this. So I'm gonna hang on to Hang this. I'm going to keep this one out. The rest of this stuff, I'm going to put back up here, and then we'll go through the nylon. All right, finally, let's go through our nylon plastics and see some, see what we have there, just kind of regroup with how long the lengths are and maybe come up with some future projects with that stuff as well. So first off is this big chunk of, I believe it's three inch nylon. Let's pull all this stuff out. I've got some flat square stuff, nylon, Delrin. This is more of a hard plastic. So I'm not sure, maybe that's Delrin. But this is more like a cutting board, nylon type material. Some decent lengths of that cut off. These are good. I made a handle out of, out of one of these pieces. Bring all this. That would have been, that was the one I made a handle out of and then I, I played Tested the milling machine with this and squared it off. Pretty, pretty square. Pull out the rest of the square stock. So again, more of this, this hard stuff. I have to figure out what that, what that is. And more of nylon. T. I don't know what these part numbers mean. Again, they're just cutoffs from where I got them. This one's more opaque white. This one's a little translucent, sort of. That's most of that flat stock. I do have a couple other flat pieces. Oh yeah, I got quite a bit of this stuff. I've got... mess. Alright. I have quite a bit of this flat stuff. And then this was given to me from a friend, this one, for a future project. Really nice piece. Nice thick piece of nylon, Delrin. That'll come in handy. So there's a big flat chunk. And then I've got several of these flat pieces here. So let me bring you back, bring you over so you can see a little better. So I got all these flat pieces here. These are, I think this is fiberglass. I thought these would be good for maybe uh, making a knife handle or, uh, you know, 
something along those lines. I'm not sure what I would use this for outside of that. Got some flat sheets of Plexi. Maybe I can make a, a shield out of some of this stuff. A chip shield with a magnet or something to keep chips from flying everywhere. There's a little thicker piece. A little thicker piece yet. Plastic plate cutting board. So this is all, like like I said, these would be cutting board materials. Pretty thick stuff. Here's some black. And some more of that. Again, the same. It's marine, marine board. So, again, it's all nylon. It's not going to rust or get water in it. So I got that that kind of material to work with. And then finally I've got some round stock. Let's pull that out of there. Pull this out. Let's see what we have. Pretty decent material selection, really. Um, so I've got any range from, this is probably two inch, two and a quarter. So that's two and a quarter. I said this one was probably three. It's 3.1, so that's a little oversized. This one's probably, this one's two. And then they go down from there. This would probably be inch, inch and a half. I actually used, made this. I didn't make this, but I'm, I'm using this for my degree wheel. I can put it through my headstock and actually rotate. This fits exactly in the spindle bore of, of the headstock on the, on the lathe, so kind of handy but if I need it for something I'm not going to save it just for that but uh, that's what this screw is about and then my stock goes down from there uh, acetal round it's Delrin so most of this stuff's Delrin whatever so I've got decent and then decent round stock of this material and then the sizes just kind of go from there but these will be good for something someday I do have this clear piece some some people have mentioned want to make an optical center punch or something out of that that might be a cool project but I've got a piece of clear clear plastic rod as well who knows find some some use for that stuff. but there's a that's the nylon plastic materials that I have uh, the rest of it that's that, that's it. I don't have any more stock that I haven't shown. Just need to clean this up. But uh, I just wanted to share all that with you. All right, well, that's it for the uh, review of all of my raw stock uh, work workpiece material. All of that's open for any projects out there. Just come out, I do have a list of projects I want to work on. I'll be using all this material. Um, it's a it's a decent stock for a hobby shop, I think. Um, it's really nice. I bought a few of those proto boxes and and uh, now I have a good set of material to work on small projects, tool makers accessories, things like that for the vise and the mill and the lathe. Um, it's a good start for having a small shop. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Hope you enjoyed, found it somewhat interesting, and I hope to see you on the next one.